Hey, how's it going? It's Craig, Mountain Garage, and today we're going to look at something I've had for a while, the Sega Menace. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've had this up on my shelf for a good few months now. I bought it off eBay. I bought the Menacer boxed without the game for £11 on eBay and I bought the game separately for um, £4, so about £15 all in. Um, the Menacer is a bit of a, a bittersweet memory for me. So I had this in 1992, Christmas of 92, um, when I was about 12 years old and I couldn't wait to open this. I, I remember having it and opening it on Christmas Day. But that year, um, I think my mum and dad kindly decorated my bedroom for me so I have my bedroom all decorated out in Coca-Cola colours, which was amazing. Uh, back then, that was the, the trend and the cool thing to have. Um, so red wallpaper with the Coca-Cola logo and everything else on it. I don't know why, it seems a bit weird now. But um, but if anyone have, you, have used one of these before, um, these run on infrared. And infrared and red wallpaper don't go too well. So I remember having uh, a Menacer for Christmas, opening it up, trying to play it. I couldn't actually use it in my bedroom so the only time I got to play it was when I took it downstairs in my house and of course that wasn't popular because we TVs were uh, weren't as available as they are now and uh, I had to interrupt everyone plug my mega drive in downstairs set it up and then play on it for a little bit and then take it back upstairs out of the way so um I didn't get to play it as much but the what I remember of it it was an amazing piece of kit and I kept it for a good few years before selling it on um, so I wanted to buy this one just to see if I could relive some of those memories. So let's take a look at this one. I bought this one on eBay as I said. Um, the When I bought it, it was sold as seen and, and, and tested so it not working. And the cartridge wasn't with it so I couldn't test it at the time. Um, but now let's, I've got the cartridge and everything to go with it. So let's take a look inside and see what we can do. See if we can get it up and running. Let's take a look. Okay, so everything's out of the box. That's the Menacer setup to its full setup. Um, you've got two sights on the top of it. These ones are faded a little bit, so again, I could have a look at retro in these in the summer and getting the colours back into them. It, hopefully, it'll follow the same as like the Game Boys and everything else do. Um, you can have one or the other on. You can just pull things off and take things apart and see what can what you want to do. Either use it as a handgun or as a into the shoulder, the sights. Um, pretty uh, good setup. I do like the Menace. It was a it was a pretty unique way of setting things up. It came out around the same time as the Super Scope and the other light guns that were around then. And I found that this was like the most appealing to me at the time. The Super Scope just seemed huge all the time. Whereas this one, you could strip it right down and use it as a handgun as well. And for those light gun games when you didn't have a lot of room. Um, I've not tested this yet. I'm going to pop the batteries in it. It takes six AAA batteries. So I'm going to dig some of them out now set it up and see what we can get out of it. Let's take a look. Okay, so the six triple, uh, triple A's go in here. Pop that open. And it tells you which way around to put the batteries in. I've only got a pack of cheap triple A's, so hopefully they're strong enough for what we need today. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Look at all those batteries just for one light gun. And that's the joys of having infrared, I suppose. So that's our six batteries included. And then that's our setup. Okay, so let's plug this into the Mega Drive and see what we get. Okay, so the game's inserted. Infrared controller's plugged into the second port on the Mega Drive and sitting on top of my TV ready. So let's give this a go. Good start, so we've got a picture on the screen. Okay, so we've got Menacer. I'm way too close now. I think the box instructions tell you to sit about six foot, four to six foot away from the screen at least. I'm way too close, so I'm gonna move back out of the picture just to give it a test. I'm not getting anything out of that at all. Okay, so the game's running. But I'm not getting any, any response from this at all. It's not picking up in the slightest. I'm going to check those batteries, make sure they're in the right way around. Um, if not, we're going to have a look at whether this infrared is working on this controller or not. 
Okay, thumbs down so far. Let's take a look. Okay, so there was no output when I was trying to connect this to the screen just then, trying the game. I pressed all the buttons on the front, pressed the one, the main trigger, and there was no output at all. So I think it's more likely that this is faulty rather than the infrared receiver on top of the TV. Um, this is more likely to get dropped and bashed around than anything else. Um, the one good thing, and I'll show you some footage down the lens of this camera now, is that you can test the, the IR on these. So because it's based on infrared technology, there's a little LED inside of here. When you press the buttons or when it's powered up, it lights up inside. Um, so we can test that to see if it's working. If it's not working, then I'm going to need to take this apart and take a look inside. Okay, so as you can see, this is down the barrel of the Menace light gun. I'm pressing all of the buttons, the three on the front and the main trigger button. And I'm not getting any output from this infrared light at all. So you should be seeing a, a bright red LED inside of this now. And nothing's showing up. So time to take this apart and take a look inside. Let's take a look. Okay, looking at this, there's a couple of things that could go wrong in here. There's quite a few capacitors in here. This one not looking so good at all. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Um, whether that's leaked or not, or whether that's just glued into place. I'll have a look at that in a little bit. Um, other than that, the condition inside this board is pretty good. There's no battery leakage that I can see anywhere or anything else. So I'm going to have a look a little bit closer, see if there's anything stopping any of these triggers or anything else but uh, on first inspection other than that one capacitor everything else looks pretty good so let's carry on taking a look inside I'm going to strip it right down I think see where we get to and then go from there Okay, having a quick look. This battery terminal is actually really bad. You're going to need to clean that one up. The other side's pretty clean, so this one seems to be the one that's causing some of the trouble. So hopefully if we clear that up, it'll give us a little bit more of a connection and hopefully get this thing working again. Um, but I'm going to still take it all apart and just have a look and clear it all over just to make sure. Okay, so this is the main internals of the Menacer light gun now. So we've got the top panel, which has got two infrared LEDs on the top of it. Uh, the main panel, which has got one infrared inside of here, inside of this main unit. Uh, the trigger button, which is by here, feels pretty free and it's moving quite well. Then the three buttons along the front then for the other triggers. So as I said, everything else is looking pretty neat. Um, on closer inspection, I don't think it's that cap that has gone. Hopefully we can get a bit of a, a zoomed in view there without it going out of focus. Um, but I just think it's the glue holding it down. So it's not um, it's not burst. The cap the actual top of it is nice and flat. So that's not leaked at all. So I'm pretty happy that that can stay as it is. Um, what I am not too happy with is this one connection here. So um, the connection for the battery terminal on this one side is disgusting. Um, it's really rusted so it's obviously had batteries left in it at some point it's really strange because normally both sides of them go but this side's really clean and that's how it should be and then that side is really rusty and it's disgusting so that's definitely going to be causing an issue whether it's our only issue I'm not sure I'll give that a clean up see where we get to and then have a look for any other problems after that let's give it a go
Okay, that's not a good good sign. So um, the rust was coming off quite nice and easy with a, a, a tip on the with some isopropyl alcohol on the outside. But as soon as I gave it a little bit of a scrub, the rust had got into it so much that the spring had come off. Um, so I'm going to need to clean this up and see if we can solder it back on, uh, just so we can get it connected back into here. Um, I was thinking of taking this off, but it looks like it's riveted on rather than soldered on, which is a bit of a nightmare. Um, otherwise, we could have t unsoldered this or desoldered this, taken it off, sorted it all out, and then soldered it back on. But because it's riveted, I don't really want to mess with it too much. So I'm going to carry on cleaning this and then see if we can get that soldered back into place. Aha! That's a bit easier. Okay, so I've resoldered that connection now, cleaned it all up, and just tested it. And you can see the LED down the bottom of that light gun now. So hopefully that'll be working. So I just need to hook up the rest of the Mega Drive again, give it a test, and but fingers crossed, that should be it. Let's give it a go. I think one of the biggest faults with most retro consoles and game systems I'm working on now is that people have left the batteries in. So if you do get anything that has batteries, Game Boys, Game Gears, anything else, check the battery compartment for corrosion first of all because people leave them in they leak after a while and that's what's caused that corrosion on this model so uh the rest of the insides were perfect didn't have to worry about those capacitors in the end they were just glued down so they weren't bulging or anything else um so yeah battery corrosion again it's a bit of a pain but it's easy to fix so keep looking for that if you're buying any retro models so it's generally an easy fix so if you find something that's marked as faulty check that out and maybe get it for a bargain price Okay, so I've got my Mega Drive set back up, I've got my TV on, and I've got my Menacer, let's give it a go. Light is still on. Yeah! Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's finished. That's up and running. As you can see, we should get the light down the line. Yeah, there we go. So that's the LED running um, for the infrared. So that's all running now, and I'm pretty sure for that. It's rebuilt, as you can see, into the, the full-on menacer mode. Hopefully that's been of interest to you. If you do like this video, give us a thumbs up down below. Uh, comment on any suggestions you've got for games on this as well, or anything that I could have done in a different way. Um, and also if you're new to the channel consider subscribing lots of new videos coming up uh, Lots of retro videos lots of things going on with gadgets and tech uh, And occasionally I'll go out on the motorbike and have a play around on that as well So that's fun to watch every now and then right. Thank you for watching catch you soon